Ashley here with Create for Art. Today I'm at the Cadia National Park at Sand Beach in Maine. And it's so beautiful here and I have pitched the sunset so I'm just going to start painting right now. I'm using my two inch flat brush and I'm going to get my sky in as soon as I can. So I'm just going to be really fast here with wide brush strokes. And I will give you all these colors in the description. So what I'm doing here is I'm just getting my colors down and then I will come in and give it a little more structure. Because your canvas soaks up so much of the paint, it's just nice to get one color down. When you come over here and you have a little bit more of those changes in colors and a little bit more of the bright color, you just want to grab your red and just put it right in and your yellow. Otherwise, you end up having to mix it on your uh, palette here and then you have to mix it on your canvas as well. So, might as well just mix it all in the same place. This is going to be the fastest painting I've ever painted. I think. Okay, it's hazy down here, so I'm just going to let this purple shine down here and then add a lot of white because it's really not that strong of a purple. So when you're ready to put in your clouds, you have to look at the color of the background or the darkest color that you see. So that's like a purple color. So I'm just going to grab my purple and a little bit of my black just to gray it up. And then I come in here and I make this, this form through here. You can grab a smaller brush or a clean brush. I'm gonna grab a little bit of a smaller brush. More clouds going on through here. And then it comes over here and sweeps. And it comes out here and I'm basically just getting this first layer of the clouds. Okay, and then it streaks back here. So you want to get that streaking. I'm going to spring this over. Okay. Now what you're going to do is you're going to take your blue, which is your sky color, and you're going to put back the sky in there. It's going to separate those clouds. And I'm just putting in the pink which is this cotton candy pink. And adding in this color as it comes out here and it just kind of trails off. This is going to go behind the mountain. So. You can always design that how you want to later. But at least you got the main part of it done. Okay, so now I have to really quickly make these hills right here, okay? So I call them hills, maybe they're mountains here. So I'm just taking my green, my black, my bronze, and I'm graying it down. Like I said, I have to be super fast. Okay, adding in that blue. Okay, and then I'm getting the basic of it down. So it comes up right through here. Okay, and then comes up basically like that. Okay, and these are all separated parts. So I'm gonna add a little bit more gray in this part back here. To make it look like trees, you're going to want to just do this little, you know, turning of your brush to vertical and go like this. And you don't have to make it look perfectly like trees. This one's going to be very impressionistic. As I come down here, I'm going to put a little more bronze in my brush. Just kind of follow that in the bottom. 
and then over to the side. Okay, and then go up into the formations here. I'm moving down to my smaller flat brush for the rocks and I'm putting in like the pink. Okay, so there's pink and then it goes to bronze and then it's like a goldish green color and then it's like dark bronze. Okay, so I just have to follow that and it'll look just like it. So I'm adding the pink right now. And I'm just doing the under layer because I have to go over this with some greenery. And the reason why I moved down to my um, smaller brush right now, even though it's a big amount of space, is just because it gives it some more um, depth. Because I'm going to have these different brush strokes, even though I go over it in the back. Because everything kind of shows through. Okay, then I'm going to lay down my bronze. Okay, just have to make sure I have a lot on my brush. And I'm just going to kind of come in here, because it's going to mix. Just kind of give myself an idea. Okay, and then this next is gold. Like a greenish gold layer comes back here. Okay, and this is going to help me know the colors, even though the sun's coming down. Which is the hardest part, is knowing the colors after the sun goes down. So capturing the colors and then putting in the details later is probably your best bet. Here and I'm going to put in some purple. This comes all the way and stops right there. A peninsula comes in right through here has that pink tone and stops it right there. There's some bigger trees are going to be. So I'm going to get in a pine tree here. And basically what I'm doing is just making sure my flat brush is going up and it's getting fatter as I go down. And I want to make sure that I have some contrast right through here. So I want to have a darker color. And then move on to the next one, and I make that one different. So now these trees are closer. Okay, so now I'm going to get in my watercolor. I gotta be fast, as always. I'm just gonna grab this. And I'm, the lightest color is gonna be in that back there. And I'm gonna bring this color down. about the water here is it gets greener as it gets closer. I'm going to add some of my green. You can also add yellow. I'm just going to mix on the canvas here. Shadow over here, not this much, but I'm just going to put the shadow in and then bring the blue color over. And it's like this green color that matches the trees. I just put that gray in the water to come back through here. So I'm just looking out there and seeing if there's anything that I need to add. Get these colors right. Okay, through here, I just have to come in with white because it'll blend with the blue. Just show those waves. 
for the waves, I just come in here. And when you make waves, you want to break it up. You don't want it to be just this long line, even though it kind of looks like a line in the distance. You don't want it to be just one big white line. So because the sky was pink, there's going to be some pink out here. And I'm just going to add that pink in now, even though I can't see it, it was there. So when you want to put in waves, basically in the background here, you just want to have it very close together and put distance between each one of those layers. When you get closer, you want to have, you want to skip around and have more difference between the waves. So for this last step, this is it. All you need to do is let it dry, step back, and then add any details if you want to, or you can leave it impressionistic like it is, and then sign your work and you're done. Thank you to all my Create Flow Art members for making this video possible. You too can become a Create Flow Art member. There's a link in the description below and you get lots of perks and fun things from me for doing so. I will see you in my next video. Bye. We're getting eaten alive by mosquitoes. <laughs>